Freimut Aurich grew up with Nischel. That's what they call the big bust of Karl Marx here in Chemnitz. Back in communist times, the city even bore his name. 20 years after the collapse of the East German communist state, people have a more relaxed attitude about the communist thinker. I think that in the last few years people have come to the conclusion that you don't have to back the ideology, but just see it as a part of the city and nothing more. And in the end, that helps make Chemnitz more popular too. With its legions of communist-era industrial jobs, the city then called Karl Markstadt was a bit of a showcase. Freimut Aurich was one of thousands working in mechanical engineering, which has a long history in this region. One of the city's best-known companies is Union, currently employing about 180 people. For generations, it's been producing massive machinery. Prices start at a million euros. They're known all over the world for their ability to perform precise drilling and milling jobs, down to a thousandth of a millimeter something essential in modern industries, such as building wind power generators, for instance. But by 1996, the long-established company was facing bankruptcy, as Freimut Aurich recalls. Two attempts at privatization had failed, after which the workers occupied the factory for five months. In the end, they made a risky decision to buy Union themselves. Freimut Aurich helped lead the effort. One important thing was also that people who build boring and milling systems can be arrogant. They think they're building the crown jewels of machine tools. Some of them refuse to believe that they wouldn't be using their skills anymore. A hundred workers, from temp workers to precision tool makers, joined together to buy the company. Each had to raise 10,000 marks, more than 5,000 euros. It worked, the company survived. But this man marked the end of that era. Gerhard Glantz took the reins as managing director this year. The Austrian-born entrepreneur bought the company together with a group of Dutch investors. Here, Glantz discusses an upcoming delivery to Croatia with a worker. The new boss wants to invest heavily, so as to modernize operations and needs several million euros. An employee-owned company with a hundred partners is not something that banks like to see. That's because decision-making is much more drawn out and difficult, and banks like to see companies with a clear entrepreneurial direction. It was a takeover under difficult circumstances. During the economic slump, orders have dropped by 25 percent. Glantz needs to cut costs. We're going to introduce short-time work beginning in December, but to a very modest extent. About half our workers will be working 15 percent fewer hours. Most workers would have preferred to remain owners, but banks wouldn't have approved the loans needed for modernization. It was the end of that experiment. We ask a worker how he feels about it. I'm really sad it's over. I'd have preferred to remain active as a partner until my retirement, because that way you show you're really committed to the company. Union's employees kept their ownership model working successfully for 12 years. They saved the company. And in the end, their commitment paid off handsomely. Each 5,000 euro stake was bought out for 15,000. And that's a pretty good return.